I was like, when did you get Rick Ross's number and why haven't we gotten a Wingstop franchise, Jade? What is wrong with you? You slacking on your I biz. Jade. Ryan. Rocco season. <laughs> so this is a public service announcement for Mother Nature and Mother Nature only. If you are not Mother Nature, you can keep scrolling or you can just go on to the next clip. Ma'am, I need to know what's going on outside, okay? <laughs> I need to understand why why the weather is not weathering the way that we need it to. Okay. Um, this happens every single year today. Uh, I don't understand. You of all people, a Virgo should understand that this is not how it works. They don't transition evenly. Like that's not how no, it no. goes. It's no, not no. how it goes. Spring started back in March. Okay? okay. Spring didn't start in April. Okay. Okay. May is like literally a, a week and a half away. Mm -hmm. We have had one seventy plus degree weather day. I'm gonna need her to get it together. It's been two. I said one plus. <laughs> so one plus. Okay. All right. Because certain days in the 60s felt like it was the 70s, but it was still the 60s. So that's I, why I said one I, plus. I see what type of energy you on today. I don't understand I just, the reason, but you know, it's all right. I went outside today with no coat. I had a hoodie on. Okay. It was okay. It was I all haven't right. gone outside yet. After this, I have to go grocery shopping. So mm -hmm. I'll see what she's giving. But sis, if you, you went through a bad breakup, just say that. You mean Rich Auntie does an Instacart? I like Aldi, and they don't be picking the right stuff in Aldi. And I like walking through the aisles of Aldi, Aldi. Yeah, I was whatever. gonna say because I say Aldi, but like, um, <laughs> like a normal person, uh huh, and giving normal person energy. That's all. I like okay. to shop with the others. Mm, with the peons, you know, yeah. you like to um, try to relate. Mm -hmm. That's like, what keeps me humble. Sort of like Zuckerberg wearing white tees and stuff. I exactly. see. I see. I get that's it. What keeps me. That's I get what it. Keeps me humble. I get it. You know? mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, how are you? Actually, I was fine until I popped on this call with you and saw that you was looking in my window. Like, I understand. <laughs> like, what is this today? I said. Yo. I said. All right, they're not gonna expect pink from me. I got my nice avatar, the last Airbender T-shirt going on right here. What is? I don't have time to change today. What are we doing? What are we doing? I have things to the do. The fact that I logged in and the first thing I noticed was that we had on the pinks in the same family had me weak. Okay, had me weak because what, un, what are you doing? Unintentional. I'm just trying to understand. Totally unintentional. For the new people, this is not what we do and don't expect it anymore. But like, I'm going with it today. I know a lot of people think that we're related. We're not. <laughs> This is not going to help that argument. We're not. Like, Do you think that? Who thinks that? Because <laughs> I don't know. I just nobody, assume. Nobody ever told me that. But I just assume new mm -hmm. people who don't know us just assume that, like, because we get along so well that, like, we have to be, like, cousins or something. It's I'm like, sure if we go far enough back, there's cousins. I'm sure. It's cousin something. stuff in here. Yo, talking about, I don't want to take the mood down, but, like, I oh, heard, I heard, go. I heard a James Baldwin, um, you know, I, I might, I might butcher it a little bit, but, like, he was, like, African Americans. What that means is like we're Africans without the memories and American without the privilege. That's crazy. That's no, deep. that is super deep. And That's it's true, deep. though. It is true. Yo, wild. OK, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> he was always on his ones and twos. I'm mm. not mad at Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, word, word, word. So this isn't necessarily a Am I the Asshole. It's from a Reddit subgroup called Am I the Devil. OK, I sounds good. Sounds good. OK. <clears throat> Did I, 32 male, ruin my marriage by requesting a DNA test? Wow. My okay. wife, 31 female, gave birth to our newborn baby three months ago, and I thought things were fine. However, my wife did not. Two months in, my wife approached me saying that she was exhausted from taking care of the baby alone, and she asked me why I wasn't helping. I told her that I thought I was helping, but she pointed out that I never get up at night, I never get the baby while it's crying, never change the baby, or do anything. Wow. After some talking, I admitted that I was apprehensive about helping, and she asked why. I thought it was going to cause a fight, so I tried to change the subject. She told me that I should tell her, because if I did it, she was going to go to her parents' house for help until she went back to work. I didn't want that, so I told her that I wanted a DNA test. She said she wished I would have told her this when she found out she was pregnant. I didn't understand that, but she agreed to it. She didn't seem mad or upset. She just said that I could set it up and we'd get it done because she didn't make the baby alone, so she shouldn't have to take care of it alone. Mm. We did the test, and when we got the results back, I told her and showed them to her. She didn't say anything about it. She just asked if I felt safe enough to help now. I said yes. 
Soon after that, I noticed her behavior started to change with me and my family. Everything changed and she started staying in different parts of the house. Parts I wasn't in at the time. I finally asked her about it recently and she said that she lost all respect for me. She said she spent 10 years of her life with me faithfully just for me to slap her in the face with a DNA test request. Wow. I explained that I didn't think she had been unfaithful, but I just needed to be sure. She said she's trying to work through it, but everything I say sounds moronic to her and we should just leave it where it is. (laughs) I thought if I showed her videos and had her listen to podcasts about DNA tests, she'd understand. But after the last one, she said she was going to stay with her parents. I don't know what's happening or how to fix it. She wasn't even mad when I asked for it. I feel like she isn't hearing what I'm saying. It isn't that serious. And if she could just understand my perspective, wow. I think she'll adjust hers. She's not even against the DNA test. So I'm unsure as to what her issue is. I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> this is why y'all can't be in no damn relationships. Because y'all don't know how to freaking communicate. Like, y'all don't know how to feel the feels and communicate right away and and communicate in 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 an effective way. Um, I don't know how you tell somebody that you don't trust them by asking them for a DNA test that that's a hard one to come back from, but um, yikes. I'm going to reiterate this part and then I'm going to say something after. (laughs) I thought if I showed her videos and had her listen to podcasts about (laughs) DNA tests, she'd understand. (laughs) Y'all got to stop listening to podcasts like Fresh and Fit. Them <laughs> men is not married, okay? Those idiots are not married. They're giving you relationship advice and telling you what you need to be doing. And none of the people that you're listening to are married or have children of their own. I'm trying to understand, like, what what does that do for her? Like, listening to podcasts about DNA tests. Like, she doesn't understand what DNA tests are? I'm assuming he showed her like one of the ones where some incel man was like, you know, you always got to be 100% sure. So you need to ask your partner to give you a DNA test because women are always out here doing things and you don't want to be saddled Mm. with a baby that's not yours. Mm. And for some reason, in his mind, Mm. she was going to listen to that or see that and say, that makes sense. (laughs) That makes all the sense in the world. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. This is wow. what we're dealing with. This is what this is what's out there right now. I it's it's mm. I always wonder like who created monogamy because it started all of these problems for people. Yeah. Um I myself am a serial monogamous, so I don't find it that hard if you have the right person and everybody's communicating. Um and I also don't want to feel the urge to punch somebody in the face. So, you know, I like, I like, I like my peace and my monogamy. Um, if y'all are saying y'all want that, then there's just certain things and ways of you being in order to make something like that work. If you don't want to be in a monogamous relationship, all parties involved must be aware and interested before you move forward with big decisions. Big decisions like getting married, big decisions like having children, you know, getting married, house, things like that. You know, this is crazy. Um, you know. All of this where this kid could have actually been in a, in a home that was was nice and harmonious. All of this has been messed up by listening to a podcast upending your whole home. Basically, that's that's crazy. It's, just, it's wild because I'm thinking to myself, like. If she's never given you a reason to not trust her, why would you listen to a podcast and be like, this could be me? Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're like, why are you trying so hard to relate to the issues that other people have via these podcasts? Because like, you're saying that like, you know, it's she's saying it's been 10 years. So if it's been 10 years that y'all have been together yeah. and you've never had an, any type of inclination that something was wrong, why would you listen to a podcast and be like, ha ha, that's it? I couldn't even do this if I tried. My children look like I just took them out of my scrotum and yeah. made them without the help of my wife. Yeah, you was just like... Doo, 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 so, doo. so, I mean, that's just the, the genes in my family. So, I don't, I, don't have the, I don't have those issues. But this is terrible. This is terrible. Is terrible. Like, if the roles were reversed and men had the children and women had to... DNA test when <laughs> ask these exist. questions... 
I don't and know that it would go would this way. At an all time high. I don't know that it would go this way, but I don't there would know. be no DNA test. <laughs> Abortions would be handed out like Viagra. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to have a baby? Here's this pill. We can have you uncomfortable. <laughs> and child support levels would be at an all-time high. Because, you know. I'm just saying. Y'all make the money. You got to give me all of it, you know, because I, mean, I got to take care the, of this baby by myself, Jade. And what the you court mean? systems would totally understand that. They don't understand it when it comes to us, but they would totally understand that when it comes to men. I'm just, terrible. This is terrible. You know, it's awful. All fathers should learn how to change diaper, by the way. Like, it's it's... It's dirty work, but somebody got to do it, and all all parties should do it. Um, especially when you just did it, they get that nice fresh diaper on, and as soon as they, as soon as you lock that latch, that last latch, <laughs> let another like, one go, another blowout, like, another blowout. They be like, yo, there's a, they be like, my diaper wants to party all the time, party all the time. That's that's what happens. Oh man, that is exactly. Um, apropos of nothing, but kind of in the same vein, one of the guys from Fresh and Fit who is single but has a girlfriend who's, from what they've released so far, is an escort, has this escort pregnant, and they are mm. in shambles right now. Mm. Um, so again, stop listening to people like that because wow. he's telling people that this is not his girlfriend, but she's buying gifts for his mom, and like there's pictures of her with him and his mom. Like mm. it's just a whole. And I'm just nosy. Like, I don't subscribe to them at all, but I'm nosy. So whenever things come up about them that is bad, I love to look at it because I wish them nothing but bad. Um, and so, yeah, wow. you should look into that because I think you'll get a good laugh. Why would I look into that, Jade? You, you know, I, know, I, you know, like I, you know you, I will forget this as soon as we finish talking. I know. You, <laughs> by the next topic, you're gonna, I'll be like, remember what I said about fresh and fit? You're going to be like, nope, exactly. Um, First of all, should I change my name to fresh or f like what? Like, Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Fresh? Is it fresh? Is it like, I, no, not One of me. those names is no. like Myron or something like that, mm, which is why makes they go sense. by. So it, gotcha. Yeah. Like gotcha. they both have names that are just gotcha. corny. However, it's like, I really wish I had a unique name. It would make for a very easy um, handle. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm no, with true. it. I'm with yeah, it. Yeah, no, just I, like I get it. The one name bandit over there today, you know, so. Because <laughs> there's anyway. only one. Um, so I lied last week. About what? Well, I told you you'd be lying, though. You, I told you you'd be lying. First of all, that's not what I said. I said I lied last week. Okay? Don't come on here playing in my face. I said I lied last week. Okay. 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 I watched another episode of... No way, Jade. No way. No, no, no. Reality show. No. No. And I'm going to say this in full totality. This was my last time watching. And the reason I say that is, have you watched? In full transparency, I watched because you said you watched last week. And by the time I watched the other episode, it was already there. So I was like, oh, I'm coming on this show this week. And I'm going to have more information because she said she ain't going to watch. So I'm going to have more information than her. Apparently, we're all caught up now. What are your thoughts? Gerard Carmichael is an awful, terrible person. Terrible human very being. unlikable. Terrible, terrible, know. terrible that this reality show is doing him any service. And I really feel like if he has any friends left, <laughs> that they should tell him to stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. First off, some of the, um, the just the stylizing of that show. Don't get it twisted. Virgo season about to look very similar. I'm just <laughs> I, I got a little inspiration there. All right. Anyway. Terrible human being. I really liked him before, and it's just not proving to be what I thought it was. And yes, you need some help, but you're terrible on purpose, and you're sharing it with the world. For what reason? I don't know. If you have not watched his reality show and you think you're going to, just letting y'all know right now, spoiler alert, because things <laughs> need to be said. <laughs> The minute that man got the dress code for his friend's wedding and was like, I can't wear men's warehouse. Yeah. I was like, if you <laughs> don't get off my TV <laughs> with this bullshit, you were not born with a silver spoon. Like, Yo. he said it as though he was someone who grew up having everything. Listen. And listen. had never experienced not having Listen. Everything. And so when he first said that, I was like, you're bugging. Then when he was like, because I like to wear Tom Ford. 
we can already tell you're new money. Mm -hmm. so, like you're not even making it look nouveau riche in a cute way. Like you look tacky. Like you're making this tacky. So he gets this suit. There's 10 minutes to the wedding that he's the best man, best if I'm not man. mistaken. Best man. 10 minutes till the wedding, he decides he needs to go and get a hot dog. A hot dog. And okay. is standing there doing it. The, the, the I guess the the crew is like, you're going to be late. He's like, right now, this is more important. This is all I'm thinking about at the moment. The hot dog. The hot dog. Also, to, to, to be frank, the dress code to also stated that... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I didn't even mean to do that. But Go off ahead. the dome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the dress code for the wedding, for the for the for the uh groom's party was black on black. Mm -hmm. Black tux, black shirt. Yep. Which this is terrible, by is the way. Wearing, terrible, terrible. But I mean, not everybody but that's, has that's what taste, it was, yes. But that's what it was. He puts on he has on a he has on white and black. Mm -hmm. Proceeds to show up an hour after when they take in pictures. The ceremony, when everyone is taking pictures and sticks out like a sore thumb, not because only, everyone else <laughs> is within code. Not only because he's not wearing the co the color code today, because he's not smiling at all. Yeah, he's not smiling. He doesn't look happy <laughs> at all. He looks like he is bothered that he's even shown up to this event. Oh he God. had mine as well. Told Pooh that we're not friends anymore, and Facts. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. Facts. Facts. Because the fact that and I like to say that I'm not a proponent for violence, but this is an instance where I would probably condone violence. If Pooh would have hauled off and punched him in his face, I would have understood. Yeah. I would yeah. have understood. Yeah. Because you made it about you and it wasn't about you. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I actually would have had my people escort him right out as he showed up. He wouldn't have even gotten in. Plain and simple. He he even he wouldn't have even gotten in. Mm -hmm. Like I would have told production, if you bring him here, he's leaving in an ambulance. <laughs> so you let him know. <laughs> That it is in his best, his best interest oh my God. to find something safe to do because this wedding is not safe for him. Right. Like, right. are you playing with me? Yeah. So then I can't remember her name. We pivot to him and his childhood female friend. They're both his childhood friends. Yes, they're both, both his them. childhood friends. Both of them. These are his closest him, friends. That have known him since the beginning of time in Gerard Carmichael's world. Oh my gosh. She's staying with him because like, that's just what they do. She helps him. She's there for him. Actually, um, this I didn't understand. Like, it just, the way they framed it was that she just showed up and decided she was moving in. Which, I, which we know, based on based on him, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. I've never known a woman, especially a black woman, to just be like, I'm just going to move in with you. I'm pretty sure he said something to her. He was like, yo, come stay with me for a little bit. Right. I have some connections in Holly. Like, this is right. what we can make happen. Right, right. And she was like, boom, because this is what I've wanted. And you're giving me this opportunity? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's what he did. I, yeah. You can't tell me it anything that, different. It seemed that way. She's there. They're having a good old time. They're talking about life, you know, her dreams. We see her with her acting coach, which I'm not even going to hold you. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me about she it. She was good. She was good. I was, she I was, was good. like, oh. I was like, sis got talent. Like, this isn't even some, like, you know, you have friends that are just slightly not as talented as they think. And you're right. just like, right. you just smile at them like, yeah. oh, yay, baby. Yeah. Sis actually had talent. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you see that. He keeps putting off asking like putting her in front of the right people to get her opportunities. Okay. Right. She has a birthday coming up. He's like, yeah, we got to do it big for your birthday. So she's like, I'm going to have a party in the Hamptons. He's like, I've never been to the Hamptons. She's like, well, you're going to be at the party. <laughs> and, you know, he puts it off. He basically, she's comfortable. His boyfriend shows up. He's like, we were having very quiet sex because, which again, she didn't need to know that. Right, and she was like, "You don't have to do that on my behalf. Like, I actually listen. It's not a big deal." Yeah, she was like, "I'd put my the phone to, the, I'd put the cup to the door," which I thought was funny. Right, right? she is okay. funny. She is cool. funny. So then, her birthday comes up. Um, he's like, "I have a surprise for you. Put a blindfold on. Puts her in a car. Drops her off. Takes her to an apartment, and she is ecstatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's like, "Oh my god! Like things are changing for me. Like, look at this." He tells us that he only got that apartment for her for a, for month, a month. So that he didn't have to tell her he was kicking her out of his apartment. Jade. Jade. 
today. <laughs> like, where they do this? With your friends? Your friends? I would have. Oh, my God. I just... Yo, when he was telling his boyfriend that all of what he was doing and how he did it, like the disgust that rose up from inside of this person was just like palpable. Like I, I was like, the way that they framed that this boyfriend was like, oh, we weren't necessarily supposed to like have like um, strong feelings for this person, but. What he did to this man over the last two episodes, it's just like I feel for this guy because why, why are you with why still, are you with him? Why are you with him? That was my question. Why are we still here? He's looking at you mistreat your closest and dearest friend, and he's just like, wait, you could do that to her? What'd what that mean me? for me? What'd that mean for me? Yo, crazy. So crazy. then we also spend the episode of with him trying to explain to us that He's a horrible person, but he doesn't mean to be a horrible person. And it's just the way he operates, essentially. Like, something's missing. Pooh hasn't talked to him since the wedding. Well, as he which, shouldn't. Like, I mean, he should not when have. When I tell you, if I were Pooh, this man would have been erased from my life. <laughs> like, my my wedding. Like, Your I'm not wet- saying it's like a birthday party. Like, you have a birthday every year. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, you could kind of make that yeah. up. Yeah. Hopefully, this is my one and only wedding. Yeah. And... So yeah. Pooh hasn't talked to him. Yo, what I what I will tell you though is um weddings will show you your people. Yeah. It really will. Like yeah. I I went into the wedding thinking I had specific people and these specific people would act a certain way. And I came out of this wedding very, very differently. Very, right. very few of those people I still speak to. And right. um some of those people that I still speak to, we speak to on different levels now. Right. It's, it, it'll it's reveal, weird. it'll reveal it'll be, it'll, a lot. So now we watching Cisco audition for like some Shakespeare play. Um, Macbeth, I think it was in, at a park, you know, absolutely ill prepared. Um, but she sat down. She took notes after she did mm-hmm. her thing. Mm-hmm. She made herself very likable. Mm-hmm. She right? was because very, she, very likable. Because you're like, she's really trying to do this thing and you want to see her. Yeah, yeah. Then, um, basically, to wrap this up, he decides that he has to make things right with these people. Mm -hmm. Um, So he pulls up on Pooh because Pooh's not answering his phone calls. Pooh's not responding to his text. He actually has a montage of him calling a bunch of different friends. Who some of them gave them, him. <laughs> yes. All of them were basically like, you're a shit Terrible person, friend. Terrible friend. And I don't know that I want to be your friend <laughs> anymore, but I appreciate you making this little call. Right. I feel like we've done this before. Right. He pulls up to Pooh's house and Pooh was like, mm. Pooh's not excited at all. <laughs> Pooh literally opened the door and was like, mm, it's you. Almost, you know? And he basically says, um, I didn't get to read this to you at your wedding. No shit, Sherlock, because oh. you were over an hour late. Oh, my God. And then proceeds to read what I guess would have been his best man. It was speech. not going to be because that shit was written afterward because some of the wording of that statement yeah. came from his reflection from yeah, him no. not being at the wedding when he but was supposed to be. But Pooh's not going to know that. We know that watching it. But Pooh's not going to know that. Yo, yo. Um, I don't know that Pooh forgave him, but Pooh, you know, they dapped it up yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, and then he went and made a phone call to someone within Hollywood to get old girl an audition somewhere. Right. Um, and we saw that and she killed it. Yeah. And we don't know if she got it or not. They don't, we don't show know that. if she got it or not. They ended on him with, you know, making a, what looks like amends with Pooh. I mean, obviously, this is your reality show, so you're going to show it however you want to show it. But, like, right. it was gross. It was Absolutely. it was super gross to me. Like, don't, don't, don't do all of this. Show us how terrible you are. And then, like, at the end, we're supposed to be like, oh, my gosh. Well, you know, he's fixed it. Nah. No. <laughs> I, when I tell you that oh, Jawad no. Carmichael went from being someone that I supported to me now ready to start the anti-Gerard Carmichael <laughs> fan club. I cannot Yo, stand him. Um, first off, like I 
looking at that episode, it really, outside of all the crazy stuff, like it definitely also made me have a moment of like um, re- uh, reflection. You know that I'm also gonna right. have a conversation. I've been having this ongoing conversation with my therapist, but like I'm gonna have a deeper conversation about it. But like. I, too, want to be a better friend. I'm not terrible like this person. Everybody knows my heart. Whenever we link up, it's still like, you know, we never, right, right. we never, like, whatever. But, like, I want to know how, like, I realize, I realize, like, I never really had an example of, like, like older people having, like, really deep and close relationships, Friendship, with, uh, friendships. Right. Like, my family, both sides of my family have a whole bunch of siblings, and that was, you know, their relationships. Right. It wasn't like nothing outside of that. Like it was just like, you right. know, it is that. Like, I'm the so- opposite. <laughs> I'm literally the complete opposite. I kid you not. Today, my therapist and I had a conversation because she asked me if I were to win ten billion in the lotto yeah. after taxes, like what would I do? Yeah. And so I'm telling her. And then when I finished, she said, "I asked you what would you do, and you proceeded to tell me what you're going to do." For everybody else. Right, right. And she was like, what is, what are you doing for Jade? And she was like, that's, so I, I think I'm not a, the perfect friend, but I'm almost too right involved. Right. I'm too in my friends, like, oh, I love you, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, get, I think that's funny that we're the opposite yeah. of that. Like, I get caught up in like doing all the things like work and like all of those things. And I let, I let all the responsible things kind of like, um, overshadow like right. the irresponsible like like it doesn't seem like it should be something that you should do but you're doing it because you know right. it's important to your friend or it's right. like whatever whatever like so I am working on this in the second half of my life and this is going to be something that I'm really focused on because this definitely made me I was like yo I know my friends don't look at me like this but you're honestly not you're, you are but I want to be better. I definitely want to be better. Honestly, at this point, like, if you hit me with your car, I'd forgive you because you're still a good friend. <laughs> if Javad Carmichael told me he didn't like Jay-Z, like, it would be the end of times for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the scale that we're working with right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if yeah. you hit me with your car, but like, you know what? Ryan didn't mean it. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Like, he was distracted. Like, that's my boy. You know right, what I mean? Like, right, 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 right. Javad Carmichael comes up to me and tells me that Jay-Z is not the greatest of all time. Yeah. Oh, you did that on purpose. Mm. So now we're beefing. Yeah, it was terrible. But yeah, that was one of the things. Like, that was one of the main takeaways from watching. And then he was on The Breakfast Club to really wrap this up because I guess he made that comment about slave play. Um, like, how he felt like, because his book was making him read. Oh, and God. And Charlamagne gave him the donkey of the day. And he basically said, like, it's about context. And there's really no context in which it's ever okay to refer to yourself as a slave when you're in an interracial relationship. Right. Um, it's just not... I mentioned this to you before, and I watched for this specific reason. I'm trying to figure out if this man is doing this as some sort of social commentary or some sort of like uh, social experiment or something like that, because it can't be that he is this terrible and is like, oh, let me show all of this to everyone, especially when you're trying to revamp your whole like image and all that, like. And I don't know. I don't know. I thought I was like, let me give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's a little bit smarter than everyone. Maybe he's causing all this drama to, to like rile up some something, get people watching, talking and all that. And then we're going to be like, ha ha, gotcha. This is kind of like one of those things. But I can't say that that's the case. I just think he's he, he's terrible. You know, I think he's a narcissist and he putting it all out on display. I don't think it's a social commentary. I think he literally just thinks that much, that highly of himself Man. that he's just doing this because Man. there's absolutely no way on God's green earth, <laughs> but I have watched this back before right. releasing it to MT- to HBO <laughs> and being like, masterpiece, <laughs> this is it. One thing is, I don't think that he is, I got to check the credits again, but I don't think that he's the showrunner or the executive producer or something but like that. I'm so sure he didn't knows. put this shit out blindly without <laughs> looking at it, right? I'm sure he wasn't just like, yeah, film me in these shitty parts of my life and, right. you right. know, like, don't run it back. Right. He had to have seen, Man. even if they showed him any one of these three episodes yeah. as just to give him an idea yeah. Yeah. of what he, how he presented, there's no way he saw it and was like, this is it. Mm-mm. 
Not it. So anyway, I, enough about that asshole. Yeah. We can go to my other asshole. Oh, boy. Um, Aubrey released a response <laughs> diss track to Kendrick Lamar and everybody else called Drop and Give Me 50, also known as Push Ups, um, in response to Kendrick, Rick Ross, and Metro Booming. Um, booming. <laughs> booming. My age is showing. Um, and... You know, people have thoughts. People think it's great. I thought it was AI at first. Apparently now there's a whole thing going on where there was there was a legitimate AI um, reference track. And apparently like it's like word for word, bar for bar. I don't um, think it was AI. I just think it no, was the terrible. Actual release, no, the actual release was a release, but they're saying that like it was first generated via AI and then he recorded it. Right. I Who, who knows? I there's can't put it past. There's someone out there saying... I can't put it That's past it them, is. but like it definitely did not seem like it just feel it sounded like he did a reference track and that's what we heard and it wasn't like a necessarily the best quality and I think that's what we heard. I don't think it was AI, but who knows in twenty twenty four. Not what we heard was AI, but that who knows. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> um I'm not gonna say it was terrible. I can be Yeah, I'm waiting unbiased. to hear what you gotta say. hmm I can be unbiased. I'm not gonna say that it was terrible. Um I also didn't think it was great. I, the way people was going up for it, you would have thought this was an ether moment. <laughs> and I don't think we're ever going to get an ether moment again. I get it. But I was just kind of like, I don't know. He just felt cornier to me. But I got it. Um, cornier has nothing to do with the, with the, um, with the skill level, I think. Um, I think Drake did what needed to be done. And it's the beginning, you know. and it's the beginning of something. Um, going back to Jermaine Cole, I agree wholeheartedly with him bowing out. I think he knew exactly what was to come, and he was like, "I want no parts. I don't want to be a part of what's about to happen." And I let me just gracefully bow out. People are really upset about that, but like, keep your peace, sir. You know, I'm not the, mad at Jermaine. The way and I'm, I'm not mad at him at all. <laughs> the way that Drake 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 is not like a regular type of like rapper that just kind of is like I'm going to rest on my um my rapping ability. Drake is going to take things to hell. He's going to do due diligence. He's going to find out who your girlfriend is, who your girlfriend girlfriend is, who your uncle is, who this person is. He's going to find all sorts of things that he can do outside of the rap in order to get under your skin i don't think he plays fair but it is i guess how you battle in 2024 the raps had so many double entendres and like all of that stuff it was skillful like it was very much you know it wasn't terrible i mean it was very much it had to be good after three weeks like it just had to be good and it was good the way people go up for him (laughs) You know, my expectations are, and I, and I will say this, ten toes that I'm not an Orby fan. I think he's whack. I will never be an Orby fan. There's nothing that man could do mm-hmm. short of nothing that make, that will make me like him. I, I, if that upsets you, take it up with him. I really couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. But um, I, did, I did appreciate it. Like, I listened to it. I think I listened to it twice, and I was like, okay. And then, like, that was it for me. Right. Um. But I, you would think though that he would have learned some sort of lesson because he did the I know same what you're thing about to say. Yeah. with Pusha. Yeah, and then um, mentioning his wife. His wife, yeah. And then we got Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> and for what I'm hearing, that when I was perusing Elon's app, allegedly coming out is that Kendrick has something ready. I'm sure he to does. I'm sure he that. does. From what they're saying, like they said, you know, when Joe Budden talked about Drake, they was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be lethal and da 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 da. Um, to me, it was like a little, like, jab. like nothing. It was it was a Jake Paul jab versus a Mike Tyson punch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They keep saying that what Kendrick has coming out is about to be like, ooh. All I'm saying is it's um, taking too long. These things are taking too long. So. My thing is. <laughs> Aubrey set the pace because I feel like if Aubrey would have came back earlier <laughs> instead of taking three weeks to do this, right. then we would have had a real like. Right. Because by the time y'all start releasing records, 
we're tired. Yeah. You know, moved on to the next. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? You know I'm tired. You know I've been tired, but like I want to hear the good music, so I'm trying oh, to, I'm not. willing myself to be interested, you know? And I love a good battle. <laughs> so sign me up. It's good. It's I thought it was good. I think Kendrick has to come back with something oh, crazy is. and I believe he will. Um Oh yeah. The the thing that had me rolling all week or for a few days at least was him and Rick Ross with their rich feud back and forth. And I just was just like, first off, first off, y'all sound stupid. But Rick Ross is funny. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and I need people who are into this to understand that Rick Ross is not serious about this at all. Like Rick Ross is literally just playing around. Like he literally just has that much free time that he just decided to like do this. Okay. <laughs> They are like Rick Ross is hilarious and he's petty. But okay, so is Drake about, though. So is Drake. No, he is, but like Rick Ross is older petty. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And there's a difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, he's calling, which I when I told y'all that he was the BBL king, everybody looked at me like I was crazy. But Rick Ross obviously believed me because I was Rick like, Ross is out here. I was like, when did you get Rick Ross's number and why haven't we gotten a Wingstop franchise, Jade? What is wrong with you? You slacking on your I, biz. What's going on with all you? All I'm saying is, I said it <laughs> and everybody was like, mm, no, I don't know. Here come Rick Ross confirming what I said. Oracle. Y'all, I keep telling y'all to listen to me. Y'all don't listen to me. Oracle. Okay? BBL King. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, it was so funny when he showed the text message that he sent to his mom. Um talking about it Terrible. and then like Rick Ross's response Terrible. is like your mom is beautiful by the way <laughs> like I need Rick Ross to be so fucking for real you know what I mean like I love it like that's what I like I like that he's like that type of petty too mommy the racists are being racist like what dude like and first of all like <laughs> Aubrey you need to know what the definition of racism is calling you white boy is not racist Yo, like, like you're you're literally Jewish he literally made himself the white boy by saying like, that Rick Ross was racist because if Rick Ross and you are black, how is he racist against you? He's lit like his mom is literally a white Jewish woman, <laughs> therefore making you a half white Jewish, half black man. Yeah. Like right? I don't think that he would even have to convert or anything like that. Because I mm -hmm. think when you're when you're Jewish, your mother has to be yeah. a Jewish woman. Yeah. Like, not your yeah. father, the mother. And right. so, that's what so it is. So, he's good. Like, right. And there's nothing wrong with that, Aubrey. Like, embrace it. You saying that he's being racist to you, though, <laughs> just points out to us that you're not one of us. Like, you don't consider yourself to Clearly be one not. of us. Clearly not. Clearly not. But, like... And I'm saying this. I need... I, I know Kendrick is going to go dirty. And I know one of the things that somebody's going to pull out soon, and it's going to make my evil heart cackle when it comes to Aubrey is that blackface photo that he did back when he was younger. Oh, man. Didn't um, Pusha? He did, but I, but we didn't talk about it. Pusha pulled it out, and that was like a cover. Mm. And then we kind of just moved on. Yo. I'm waiting for them to make this the center of, like, I need you to explain this. Because he didn't get to, he, no one pushed him on it. Like, yeah. why would you think this was okay? Yeah. yeah. Like, where did this come from? And I need the raps to start doing that. It's going to be... It's gonna be interesting. I I, I want to see. I want I want this to spread out all the way through the summer so that I have yeah. some things to do. Like I have the Missy concert in August. I have the Usher concert in September. Yes, the summer ends in September. By the way, two days after my birthday, summer baby. Okay, yeah, I'm a get it. Baby. Don't 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 don't, don't get saying. it twisted. Anyway, so I'm gonna need things to keep my attention in between those two um, concerts that I will be in attendance for. By the way. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the truth. It's <laughs> it's going to... I'm a little He's bit... He's just letting you know his agenda. I'm just saying, I I was excited for Usher. I think I'm hella excited for Missy. It's just... I'm still debating. The wife I, I, and I, I was in this house, and we played a playlist of Missy hits, and we was just like, nah, this is going to be crazy. Then we went to the Busta hits. Nah. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> 
I don't know why my come on, my, come on. I was really killing it. You're for gonna me. forget. Like, it just, doesn't matter. No matter who she is, it's, it's you're gonna like, forget that she's like there. I can't like Busta and Missy could do it by themselves, and you would That's not true. like you would not feel like you missed and anything. And then they called her an icon, <laughs> and I'm like, icon where? <laughs> like, I think she's a sweet girl, but iconic words mean things, Yo. people. She's a sweetie, though. Y'all, ma- y'all act like Sierra don't have a few bops. Like, there's going to be records that you're going to be like, I know that. Oh, that was great. No, okay, I'm not saying okay. she don't have bops. Okay. Sierra can perform One Two Step O oh, and the other song that If I Was a Boy or whatever that song she is. She got at least, she has then, at least six or seven songs that you're going to be like she into. she can exit stage left. No, those are the three songs that I, unless she's doing Like You and she makes a guest appearance with Bow Wow, I, that's it. I don't, everything else she can keep. Never going to happen, by the way. Never. I know. But other than that, like, I literally have no interest in that. Like, So Timbaland also is a special guest. And then you have um, Ludacris is on records with Missy and Sierra. I get so it. I'm sure he's going to come out. I it's get gonna be, it's it. Go, I just. It's going to be fire. <sighs> that's Sierra. I just I had something about that. It's just Girl, curling over for me. Get your rich auntie purse and go and buy this thing on Ticketmaster. I told you you I have was Verizon. About they it. even have discounted tickets for Verizon. Go get them I damn tickets. I'm thinking about it. I don't know yet. <laughs> that's going to be a very long bathroom break. During the, and if they do it where it's like Missy Buster Sierra, it's Sierra never. Bu- why would they put Busty? Why would you think they would put Sierra after I don't Missy mean it like and Buster? Are you crazy? I don't mean it like that. But you know, like, like where they may try to like intertwine their sets together. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then like I'm not gonna be able to gauge when I can like step away because they know people gonna leave when Sierra's on stage. They don't want her to embarrass herself. So now I gotta sit there and listen to Sierra today. You're going to take your old lady bathroom break before it starts, and then you'll be fine throughout the concert. You could do two hours. I don't. You can do it. Use, you can do it. I don't use public restrooms. You can so do I'm it. I'm taking my bathroom break before I even get to the venue. Um, yeah, there you because go. Because I don't do Boom. I don't do public restrooms. And there restrooms. it is. Um, so speaking of which, toilets. Dr. Umar had <laughs> Nick Cannon oh, God, <laughs> on this Nick girl. Cannon's show. <laughs> Yo, your segues be killing me today. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Oh uh-huh. my gosh. Where they talked about um, a bunch of different uh, societal and cultural issues, in part, um, black men in media, and then, uh, you know, black men wearing dresses, whatever. But then Dr. Umar started talking to Nick Cannon about his lack of melanated baby mothers. Mm-hmm. And it was very interesting because. I didn't watch the whole thing, and if I'm wrong, it looked like Dr. Umar had Nick very stumped because he was basically like, you're not spreading the wealth amongst your people. You're spreading the wealth amongst others. Right. And Nick was trying to justify it. Like, um, you know, one of his baby mothers is very light-skinned, but she's not all, she's not all black and she's not all white. She's mixed and... (laughs) Completely alluding, completely the Dr. Umar's Dr. Umar's point going Yeah. Yeah. Well over <laughs> Well over that man's head. Yeah. Then said that one of his baby mothers is Afro Latina and Dr. Umar was like, That's black. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. so you don't even understand what you're doing right now. I say all that to say I'm glad Nick Cannon has stopped having babies so far. I don't think we've had any new Nick Cannon babies in twenty twenty four just thus far at any pregnancies. I could I I couldn't care less about where his money's going and what generational wealth he's divesting himself of to other cultures. I'm just tired of hearing about Nick Cannon. Mm. <laughs> so I am what are your thoughts on Dr. Umar? That's 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 the first thing. A broken clock is right once a day, twice a day. That would be that twice. That would be twice. Yes. yes twice a day. <laughs> I am not a fan of Dr. Umar. Okay. Um because I feel like he is okay. First of all, where's the school? Dr. Umar crowdfunded for this Pan African school many, many moons ago that he had people invest money in, mm-hmm. and we ain't seen no groundbreaking. We ain't seen a building bo- bo- purchased nothing. Where's the school? That's first. Couldn't tell you. Second, I don't agree with a lot of the things that he says um, in terms of. 
I don't agree with his thoughts on interracial dating, for example. I just feel like love who you love. Not everybody who's dating outside of their race is doing it with some sort of nefarious intentions. Like, love happens in the least, most unexpected ways for some people. Like you, when you walk outside your door to walk cash and you see your man walking his dog and you're like, oh my gosh, our eyes connected and look at us. Now we're together forever. And, and you know, he may be black, he may be white, he may be Asian. I don't know. Um <laughs> But I'm not gonna be like I can't I can't love you because you're not you're not me. Mm. Um, so I don't agree with his takes on that, but I do agree with some of the, some of the things that he says in regards to just like how black men disrespect black women. Some black men disrespect black women when they get with these. He calls them snow bunnies. Mm. Um, and so I think sometimes he makes valid points, but he's not. He's not my cup of tea. Like, yeah, so I don't. I never really paid any close attention to this guy. Um, this Nick Cannon stuff definitely did pop up on the timeline. And so I was doing a little bit of a deep dive. And so I was just like, okay, okay, Dr. Umar. And then I was just like... And then I'll be like, okay, okay. And then I'll be like... <laughs> so I couldn't tell if I understood what he was saying no. or if I kind of align myself with what he was saying either so i i don't know that's why i asked what your thought what your take is on he's him, very i don't bloated. know he uses because he's intelligent he he uses a lot of bloated words because mm -hmm. he knows that a lot of people will not and not you just like the general right, public right won't actually be able to understand what he's saying but it just sounds good right and so they'll be like that man is smart. Like he, he's really not. Because he was saying something. He was like, yeah, you can't say African-American. You got to say American-African. And I was just like, okay. And then I was just like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. Yeah. But, like I couldn't, I couldn't yeah, he, quite grasp he it because he that. talks really fast too. So it's just and like. And that's the other, that's the other <laughs> mind trick that he does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sometimes he makes valid points. Like when he's clear, when he knows he's clear, yeah. you'll hear it. And you're like, I okay. heard you. Okay. And then there's moments where you're just like, my brother, what? <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. where are we going with yeah. this? Yeah. So he's very polarizing in that way too. Yeah. Um, but Nick Cannon, a lot of, a lot of these um, pseudo intellectual men like a Nick Cannon who will get on there and tell you, you know, whatever he wants to tell you about families and people wearing dresses they're not equipped to argue with someone or have a discussion with someone like dr umar because he is that intelligent mm -hmm. and also that like sociopathic in a way right you know what i mean right um so but i just want the cannon to stop and i want them to stop talking about men wearing dresses because historically men have always worn dresses Okay, it's not it's nothing new. It's nothing new. You see the pictures. Men have worn dresses. Honestly, y'all was wearing dresses before women were wearing dresses. Y'all was also wearing heels before women was wearing heels. Uh, and then one of y'all was like, mm, "This is uncomfortable. We should make this something women do." Yo, and now roles are reversed. I'm this just is this is a thing because like if you do the history of fashion, um, even the color roles, blue and pink, it was opposite before. Because, you know, of, uh, like, logistical reasons. Like, anyway, all that stuff is garbage to me. But, like, it is. you know. It's stupid. Whatever. Um, let's see. We've been, Gerard Carmichael took up so much time. Um, I'm glad it did because I needed to get some things off my chest because you made yeah, me watch just, that thing and it needed to be said. so annoying. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, this is interesting to me because I'm not familiar with this person. Um, but he'd been coming up across my timelines because he has a song out where it's basically where he says, um, if I was a bad bitch, I would fuck me too. And it's very house music and inspired. And Chopper. And, yes. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it has popped up on my timeline and the gyrations are, it's too much in my face, sir. You're, you're like, yeah. get, step back, step back a little bit, please, please. So the reason I'm bringing him up is... I haven't done this in a while, but before y'all start liking him because of things that he said about, you know, just because I make this type of music doesn't mean that I am gay. Like, I want to get back to when artists had fun and da 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 da. Just know that he's an abuser and this is him trying to rebrand himself. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. So, I, that's why I wanted to discuss him. No, I, I know nothing before about I did this my man. deep dive, before I did my deep dive, because I'm always about men who are okay with embracing the non-traditional when it comes to like music right like throw okay. on a skirt paint your nails do whatever the other people are gonna be like oh my god you're gay i love it i love when <laughs> men are secure enough to do things like that 
and then address it in a way where they're like, I'm not, I'm just having fun. And this is what fun looks like for me. Try me and I'm gonna beat your ass. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, let me let me get this a, a listen. Also, it's not my, totally not my ministry because I would never walk around saying if I was a bad bitch, I'd <laughs> fuck me too. I'd suck me. I would never walk around saying that. Um, but I was like, look at this boy getting it in. I, I was ready for him to vogue and all of that. Like, I was, I was ready. Right, right. Uh, but apparently, after seeing it and then doing a deep dive, this is his second rebrand because apparently he's beat up his baby's mother um, violently and had rolled up on her, like threatening to shoot her with a gun wow. like on live or something like this at one point. Wow. Um, and this is his second rebrand. I guess his first rebrand was him like planting and being a gardener and like all about being a vegan or some shit like that. And people mm. were like, oh my God, look at this rapper from the hood. Is doing that, this. Is that right? And now there's this. Um, we don't care. Don't like him. Okay, <laughs> y'all. Don't don't make him the next Lil Nas or something to that effect. Like, did let's you, not. Let's, did you let's see, not. speaking of, speaking of like blurring lines and stuff, did you see Lil Uzi Vert voguing at Coachella? That is Uzi. Okay. <laughs> that is I, Like, he's not my ministry. Like, I don't, I don't listen to his music. <laughs> But one thing I know about him is that he has always been one to buck tradition, mm. and I am here for it, okay? I don't know. I think... I am here for I it. I think what happened was, I don't think he intended on it. I think he was playing the music, and people weren't, like, really going up the way he they he thought they were going to go up for the music. He was like, I got to bust out all the stuff, death drop, everything, all the things, all Do the it, things. Baby. <laughs> See, and I, if I was there, I would have ate that up. Yes! Like, I would have ate that up. Isn't do what he, you gotta do. That's the boyfriend of the city girl? JT, yeah. Mm. I don't know if they're still together, but that's the that's the boyfriend to JT. Mm. Or it was the boyfriend to JT. Look at me sound um, like last the old thing, man. Last thing before we wrap this show up, because we are approaching. Donald Trump is on trial for his hush money. His hush money trial has started. But her um, they finally, <laughs> Which I know. <laughs> um, they have finally picked the 12 jurors, and now they they, I think, are in the process of picking six alternates no you know for somebody walking around calling somebody Just, sleepy joe your man was definitely <laughs> asleep before, that first day before you continue um you know i be i'm the old man that be listening to the 1010 wins news in the car so on my way back to the house to do this mess talk with you found out that they've completed it they've have the oh, alternates the six the alternates and the jurors so yeah it's happening it's happening he's definitely gonna end up in jail before the trial ends because He's not allowed to talk about things, and he goes onto his little social media platform and does talks about things, and this judge is not playing with him. <laughs> um, and so I, for one, am looking forward to Donald Trump spending at least a night in jail before they bail him out. Speaking of which, the social media, Trump social, what is it, Truth Social or whatever, yeah. he went public so that he could gain the money to pay um, Tish James off. And now the stock is plummeting. <laughs> Because they didn't realize all the numbers that he talking about, the the thing don't make no money. So, it don't make no money. Social media platforms don't make money. So um, on top of that, he's also now saying that he would like any of the politicians who fundraise off of using his name, that he feels like he should get a cut mm, of what they raise. That's what broke people say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's some broke talk. I need a right I need there. a cut because remember he was rich. He's very rich. He's you know, very rich. rich. <laughs> um, very rich. Um, and Stephen A. Smith, I need you to sit down oh and what happened? stop talking. What happened? He was just on ESPN, not today, actually, um, talking Friday. about how Donald Trump wasn't lying about black people relating to him once he got indicted. What? Okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. Yo, why did these people do There was a point in this? my life. There was a point in my life where I worked at a place where Stephen A. Smith was a frequent visitor. Of course. And when I tell you that man is the biggest, corniest clout chaser ever, he wants to be he wants to be famous. He's literally a like he's literally the embodiment of a groupie. <laughs> he is the the biggest groupie you will ever meet in your entire life because nobody knows him outside. Like if you see him outside, nobody knows that that is Stephen A. Smith. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And so he spends his life chasing after popularity that will forever elude him because he's corny. Yikes. Shut up. Yikes. Shut up. The thing that I can't stand is that people like a Stephen A. Smith, they they do all this inflammatory kind of like talking 
for the others to pay them mm-hmm. for it and like mm-hmm. why am i pandering to you like i just can't I, it just feels so gross it feels like i need to take a shower every time like i also hate having the black talks and the conversations and like all the things that like we should be doing amongst ourselves like you know okay nah you shouldn't do that all that type of stuff in front of the gaze of them right because the respectability conversation. i hate i hate I hate all of it. I hate. I hate all of it. Like it's, you know why I hate it. It's gross. I hate it because they don't deserve it, but also because nobody else is telling their people what they shouldn't and should not be doing in front of other people. Facts. Because everything that applies to us as a group applies yeah. to other people. Yeah. And those people don't tell their people. Yeah. To not do that for other people's, they just kind of let them be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if that's you, that's you. Yeah. Like I said, like. Sexy red is not my ministry, but I'm never gonna tell that little girl to cover up. You know what I mean? Like that's not my place. Like right. have fun. Right. I I had fun if <laughs> social media was around back when I was in college <laughs> or when I was a hot young chicken. <laughs> the fact that you say pop- chicken lets us know how old you are. But yes, chicken head, bird, <laughs> pigeon, whatever you want to call it, that was me. It's to the point where now, yeah. whenever I post a song from my Spotify on my Instagram stories, one of my friends literally sends me a whole bunch of chicken emojis mm. Mm. because she knows what I was back in the day. Yes, but friend, I agree with you. Oh, Black Ryan at Oh Black Ryan. Don't. First of all, she's never going to do that. Send she's never gonna do me that. DMs. I need to see it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Let's not and pretend that we will. Okay. Um, and I think that was that was it. Was it? Was it? Now? I hope Donald Trump goes to jail. Yeah, we're gonna see. Come up, but... We're gonna see. I mean, I already knew that Uncle Joe was gonna try to give us our student loan money back right around this time. I don't care. I don't need to be paying anymore. So yes, please forgive it and do all of that stuff. I knew that was gonna be the case. I we all knew that all these cases and all this stuff was also gonna be happening while Trump was gonna be, you know, running right. as well. As crazy as we've been over the past few years, I wouldn't be surprised if this man gets sentenced to some sort of jail time and also gets elected to be the president. And then we got to think about how are we going to figure out what that means. That's just where we live now. I I agree with that in totality. I don't know. I agree with that. He's also tried to um, get out of, you know, I love the judge. He wanted to do some support, some Supreme Court hearing, I think, is coming up in regards to him. He went, tried to get a delay on that day, and the judge was like, you don't need to be nope. here for that. <laughs> and then he also tried to say his son is graduating from high school, and he would like to <laughs> attend that. And the judge was basically like, we'll get there when we... We'll, we'll see when the time comes, right, because right. hopefully this is fast, and that's all dependent on you and how you act. Right. And if you act right and we don't miss any days, right. you should be able to make it. Right. But we'll... We'll see how that goes. I never want to be... Since when did that man care about his son? <laughs> I never want to be 70-something and have to worry about going to my son's high school graduation. <laughs> that's just that's just not something that I'm signing up for. I used to think Barron wasn't his son, and then I saw a side-by-side, and I mean, oh, my God. And there it is. Baby. And there it is. That face. Oh, poor thing. What kind um, of exercises do lazy people do? Wake-ups? Diddly squats. <laughs> <laughs> what sound does a one-eyed horse make while walking? Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Nay. Sigh, claps. <sighs> <sighs> wow. <laughs> Die. All right. <laughs> okay. Um. We were just speaking about Trump. I should have started with this one. I should have started with this one. Why did Trump dine and dash? I don't know. You're going to say something about China again, ain't you? Because he didn't <laughs> want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you get if a dinosaur kicked you? I don't know. A mega sore ass. You said that shit already. I feel like you did, and I totally, totally forgot. Did I? I think so. I think oh. so. All right, all right. How many South Americans does it take to screw in a light bulb? For some reason, Argentina's coming into my mind. How many? A Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> These are great today. I don't care what you say. Yeah. These are great. Oh, my God. Where do burgers like to dance? 
just so corny. I don't know. At a meatball. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What's the difference between girl spaghetti and boy spaghetti? Meatballs. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right. When the mystery machine gets a flat, Mm -hmm. who has to change the tires? Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Okay. All right. It's getting... (laughs) getting good and terrible you have any more i have one more okay this is more of a a state well i used to have a fear of painting but i brushed it off Mm. yep virgo season show at gmail.com is the email address (laughs) that's the end of the episode email us something um You can follow me at O Black Ryan. That's O H Black Ooh. Ryan and her, the one named Bandit at Jade. J O Y H D A E. Don't ask me why she spelled it like that, but that's what it is. J O Y H D A E. That's what somebody gave my mama. Mm. I, I ain't had nothing to do with that. I didn't name myself. <laughs> you got something to say? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's I you. do. That's I you. do. Yep. I, I was looking at my joke like that was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can also find us on social media at. Virgo season show. That's on TikTok. Mm. That's on Instagram. Mm. That's on YouTube. Yep. Um, hit us up in the DMs. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. And if you're listening to us on uh, any of the other streaming platforms, don't forget to leave us a five star review and or rating. Why did John Smith break up with Pocahontas? Colors of the wind. He found a Navajo. Huh. <laughs> He found a Navajo. <laughs> Season.